Wherever you look, in town or in the countryside, mini scooters are everywhere. Old or young, everyone wants to have a go, however good they are at it. But do you know how it all started? Behind the boom, there's a Swiss inventor, Wim Arboter, from Urtikon on the Lake of Zurich. In the 90s, he got more and more tired of having to walk to his snack bar, even when his wife Janine was with him. He said to himself, If only I had a scooter. And that's when Wim began to experiment in his garage. I put together a really basic model in my garage. It had inline skates wheels, and it was actually the first prototype. Because I was a bit embarrassed about it, I left it in the garage, just gathering dust. But Wim's wife protested. I told him, look, you had a good idea. Now you should do something about it. Don't just let it gather dust in the garage. That made sense to Wim. He got down to it and built his first real mini-scooter. Wim was clever. He went to China. His first mini scooters were already being produced in series at the end of the 90s. Here's the micro scooter. It looks similar to a traditional scooter. And here's a kickboard, the sporty version with two wheels at the front and a joystick instead of normal handlebars. The factory works around the clock, seven days a week. Discipline, that's the motto for the workers. Most of them live near the factory. It makes it cheaper. Salaries aren't high. At the end of the 90s, they earned about 150 francs a month. You have to produce such a gadget where it's cheap, because a lot of it is made by hand. If it costs three times as much, nobody would buy it. It's clear that you try to manufacture more and more products where it's cheap. Pim Arboter's kickboard and microscooter were a great success. Soon, thousands of mini scooters were cruising around Switzerland. Wim's ideas were so good that other companies wanted a part of the business. Suddenly, there were copies in every shop. On the other hand, the shops sometimes ran out of Wim's original scooters, so they had to turn to copies. The legal situation was difficult for Wim. There had been scooters before. And there was even a patent for a collapsible version from 1932. Wim's success was to realize his idea. That's much more than just having a plan. But if you put your ideas into practice, you'll be faced with copycats, even in China. Wim found more than 50 copies while he was walking through a street market. This is a design from the USA. Just a copy with a different name, but for a quarter of the price. That's tough. But then there's a ray of hope. Here's an original one. That makes you feel good. There's a nice Swiss cross on it.
The answer to all those problems is quality. Tests, eliminating faults, more tests. Always keeping one step ahead. That's Vim's motto for tricky situations. In China and in Switzerland, when he is presenting his trendy new models to the shops. Here's our latest model. You see, we keep going. We'll always be the first to make something new. It's the idea of a system of modules that can be combined. You can also stand it on the ground. That's it, being one step or one kick ahead and setting your sights on the future. We're thinking about various new products. We want to develop a motor with a rechargeable battery. Or even a sail. They can go as fast as 60 kilometers an hour. And we're planning a braking system with ABS. Whether it's a high-tech model or a traditional kickboard, whether you see a copy or an original, Wim Arbuter has turned the scooter into a must-have. In Switzerland, in Europe, all over the world, the mini scooter is part of our lives today. Thank you. 